The word Anglicanism comes from the Anglo-Saxon root. It comes to us through uh, the development of the word probably from the Angles, the Teutonic people probably in the German area that invaded England. It is in fact the root word for England and for the word English. Here's the thing, we don't know exactly how the faith got to England. We do know that by the year 200 already there were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ in the British Isles. There are a number of possible suggestions people have given and historians have given. Uh, one is of Joseph of Arimathea, uh, living after the persecution started by Saul uh, in Jerusalem and taking a group of people and going through South France or Gaul at the time and, and landing in England. Another possibility is a Celtic king that uh, became a prisoner of Rome for a while and seven years after completing his home arrest, he returns to England, uh, bringing with him, with him uh, some believers. Uh, the more likely scenario, at least for me, is that the numbers of soldiers that were stationed in Jerusalem and in, in that area uh, that came into contact with Christianity, and we need to remember that Jesus himself came into contact with centurions. We know that Peter goes to the home of Cornelius very early in the church of in the uh, book of Acts and how many people there of the family of Cornelius and maybe friends became Christians and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Knowing that and, and knowing historically that the Roman legions uh, came to England very early on, it's not unreasonable to think that many of these soldiers may have been the ones that brought Christianity to England. What we do know for certain is that some of the early fathers, such as Tertullian and Origen, already mentioned believers in our Lord Jesus Christ in England. And by the time of the Council or the Synod of Arles, uh, we see bishops from the Celtic Church in England uh, coming to some of these synods. Well, one of the grave errors that people can make when they think of the Church of England or, or the Anglican Church, and have made, because I've heard it numerous times, is to say that the Anglican Church really had its birth on Henry VIII's desire for a divorce from his queen, and therefore he broke with Rome because Rome wouldn't give him the divorce. Uh, clearly, that's not the case. Uh, in any case, what he may have done is that he took over the authority of the existing church and took it away from the Pope at the time. Uh, that, we can say, it did happen. Historically, of course it did. But the roots of Anglicanism precedes even the monarchy in England. It, it's there from the, from the Celtic movement, People like St. Patrick, St. Columba, and so many others that established monasteries all over uh, the British Isles. Anglicanism is rooted in the, in the old Christian church of the first and second century. Anglicanism is not identified by a particular philosophy. Anglicanism is not even identified by its own theology. Anglicanism is also not identified by a particular individual, such as Luther or Calvin or Swingley or some others. Uh, we certainly have our great theologians, and we can look to Cramer as one of the uh, architects uh, of eventually reformed uh, Anglicanism. Uh, but we're not identified by one particular reformer or by one particular theologian. Uh, we're not identified by a polity. We certainly have our polity, but it's not what governs us. It's not what uh, identifies us as, uh, as Anglicans. Uh, Anglicanism has best be described 
for example, by, by Hooker, Richard Hooker, uh, in the latter part of the 16th century as a uh, church with three legs, a uh, three-legged stool, meaning scripture, uh, whatever scripture is not totally clear on, then tradition as it interprets scripture, and then if neither of them, because times change, a reason as it interprets the tradition and as it interprets uh, the scriptures. However, this analogy has its, its difficulties as well as all analogies do. Uh, Bishop uh, Lancelot Andrews probably gives a much better and clearer, not that, that Hooker was incorrect, but a much clearer picture of, uh, of what Anglicanism is truly all about. And the way that, that he described Anglicanism was using a five-fold way. He described it this way. He said Anglicanism is one Bible, two Testaments, three creeds, the Athanasian, the Apostles' Creed, and the Nicene Creed, four ecumenical councils, and five centuries of the church. And we found our root in those five ways. And that's the way he described it, and he's probably very, very close to what Anglicanism really is about. We are Catholic in the way in which we do liturgy, in the way that we worship, in the way that we do the sacraments, and, and the place that the sacraments have in our lives as Anglicans. But we're also very evangelical in the place that Scripture has in the church. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God, and our sermons are always based in the Scriptures. Uh, the Bible has the authority to instruct, to correct, and to guide uh, the Anglican Church and the general Anglican uh, worshiper. But we're also charismatic in the sense that we function under the gifting, the direction, and the power of the Holy Spirit as well. The Anglican Church today is not an American church. It is a worldwide church. The Anglican Church spans the globe wherever the English missionaries went. Well, one of the things that, that makes the Anglican Church very relevant uh, today is the fact that the Church has been described by many over the centuries as a church of the via media. Not middle of the road, but via media, in the sense that Anglicanism offers the worshipers today, the, the seekers today, both the root of the early church and uh, the, the church that is modern today, uh, a church that is still following Christ in every respect, still being led by the Holy Spirit in every respect, uh, and, and the seeks to spread the gospel still with as much seal and as much emphasis as the early missionaries of the Celtic Church. We are part of a church that has much to offer uh, the world. Whether you come from uh, an old Catholic uh, tradition or you're from a more modern uh, renewal movement that, that has sprouted uh, in the last few centuries, uh, in the Anglican Church, they both meet, uh, and we are, as I said, sacramental, uh, spirit-led, and very much led and empowered by the Word of God.